I'm so glad you're here, as long as you don't fall asleep. But I'll do my best to keep you awake. This is my very first time in India. Okay, you did well. Now it's my turn. Woo! I, I really am so excited to be here. This has been one of my favorite conferences so far. You all are so inspiring. And I really mean that. You are so intelligent and so enthusiastic, and I just love it so much. Thank you so much for having me. So let's talk about type safety. Uh, at lunch, one person was saying that they don't use TypeScript, so hopefully they learned something in this talk. Type safety is important because it means your program will actually do what you want it to do. For example, if you have a function that needs to do some math, you should give it a number. If you give it a string, it will uh, probably work because JavaScript was only built in 10 days. But ignore that because it won't always work. JavaScript gives you some runtime type safety. But you have to run the program to know if it's correct or not. This is a colossal waste of time. There is a better way. The ideal scenario is that all type errors will be caught at build time, ensuring type-related bugs never reach production. And this is the entire motivation behind TypeScript! You know, it's funny. All you have to do is just like, go like this, and everybody claps. So TypeScript is like walking through a maze with your eyes open. But JavaScript is like running through a maze with your eyes on fire. Oh, didn't even mean to do that. As a co-founder of the startup Flight Control, where we make it easy to deploy apps to AWS, I care a tremendous amount about building efficiently, fast, and bug-free. TypeScript is one of the biggest levers available to accomplish this. Thankfully, setting up TypeScript in Next.js is a breeze. Rename a file to .ts or .tsx if it is using JSX in the file. Then restart the dev server, the next dev server, and Next.js will automatically install all the packages you need and create the config files for you. It's really that easy. It's so incredible. So there is zero excuse to not use TypeScript uh, if you're using Next.js. Here's the tsconfig.json file that is generated for you. This is how you customize TypeScript. I highly recommend changing the strict option to true, if not right away, after you have become more comfortable with TypeScript. Because strict true will give you the most guarantees of type safety. With strict false, there will be cases where TypeScript will not actually save your bacon. In my opinion, TypeScript shines the brightest when working with data, because data usually becomes very complex and hard to keep track of in your head. Let's look at how TypeScript can help us with using data in Next.js. The first and most basic way to render data on the page is using get server side props. So we'll add this function.
I wish I could run outside and watch the plane, but, or coding, and I have no idea what I'm doing, and we don't get any autocomplete. So, thankfully, we can import a type from Next.js, get server-side props, and now we get a type error, helping us guide the coding so that we know we're doing it correctly. So we need to change the return to an object, and now we get type safety. So I have this data file, this JSON file with data, and we're just going to load that, return it from get server-side props, and then render it in the page. Yay, the demo worked. So that is using, uh, that is using how we uh, um, use it data in Next.js. And uh, something has been continued like it was. But, um, OK, so now we still have a problem. Deployments is type any. And we can break the code, but TypeScript doesn't complain. So that's not what we want. So we can define a manually, a manual, manually define a type for our data. And this is a type of the data from the JSON file. We know what it is. So we'll just write it, assign it to the variable, and add that type on our page props. Yes, we got an error. So that's exactly how TypeScript helps us. This is great. Actually, it's not. Because if we remove deployments up here, we don't get a type error. But clearly, the app is broken. So TypeScript isn't a magic bullet. You still have to use it correctly. What we need here is a way to automatically link the get server-side props data to the component. Good news! With some advanced TypeScript, we can do that. Even better news! Next.js did all the hard work for you. We can import and infer get server-side props type from Next.js. And now this gives us the type of the data. Oh, wait a minute. This is not working correctly. It's still type of any, and there's no deployments in this object. Oh, yeah. With Next.js, you have to uh, specify the type there in your um, get server-side props type. And now we can change the component to use that page props. And now we can remove that deployments type. And we get a type error. It's exactly what we want. So now we really have full stack type safety on this page. This, my friends, is the secret to a long, happy marriage with TypeScript. We have TypeScript working with our JSON data file, but for a real app, we need a database. Uh, does that mean I have to manually write all the types for all the fields and tables and everything in my database? Shit. Maybe TypeScript wasn't such a good idea after all. Wait, there's a solution. Actually, there's two of them. Prisma is a TypeScript ORM that you can connect to an existing database. If you wish, it can also manage database migrations for you, which is really cool. EdgeDB, on the other hand, is a new graph-style database that, like Prisma, also has a type-safe client for reading and writing data from your database. In many ways, EdgeDB has better performance in ergonomics than Prisma, but is tied to a specific database. So for today's demonstration, we will use Prisma. 
let's throw away this JSON crap and set up Prisma. Here's the Prisma schema file that has the, the table and fields for the database. To use it, we run Prisma generate on the CLI. This will generate all the TypeScript for us. And let's go look at this file to see what is generated. Holy cow! This is bananas! You know, I really like bananas. I typically eat like three bananas every day. And I really recommend them because they're really easy to use and have minimal trade-offs. But thankfully, you don't have to know anything about bananas to use Prisma, because this is all in the background. You don't have to know anything about it. Now we'll use Prisma to fetch deployments from the database and return that data from you know, server-side props. Now we can get rid of this custom type that we defined, because now the type automatically comes from the database. And you can see that the type automatically updates in our component because we're using infer get server side props. Let's go over to this uh, new page here. What? Flash must have moved this page without updating all the links. Have you ever had broken links in your next JS application because of shit like this? How did you fix it? What did you do to keep it from happening? Thankfully, the Blitz.js community had this frustration and came up with a really elegant solution. Install Blitz in the Blitz.js next package, wrap your config, your next config, with Blitz, restart the server, and now you can change your string links to be an object called routes that comes from Blitz. And this has all of the routes defined on it. And now the link works. So this is really great because it gives you type safety for your routes. It prevents broken links. And it allows you to move a page to a different URL without updating all the links. And that's because this routes object has the name of the page, the name of the component that you export from that page, not the URL. Anyone want to raise? Add this to your app when you get back to work. So we're now good on the front end side of things. We can read and render data. But for the app to be useful, we also need to let the user write data to the database. I have a form here that is ready to hook up to an API. Thankfully, Next.js makes this easy by adding a new file in the API folder and then exporting a default function from that API uh, file. And this will uh, allow us to return data. But we need to import this type from Next.js, these two types. And that will give us type safety and autocomplete. So let's get some data out of this request and just code up a little bit of a function here to take that and save it. OK, paste in the, uh, the fetch function here that's going to call that route. Now we're in business. Except, I feel like there's a bug here. Anyone see the bug? TypeScript is really great at helping us with this type of problem. So let's add a type on the, the server side, uh, the input type. We'll export that, and then we can import it in a client. And we'll just assign the input to a new variable, move the input that we had up to this new variable, and boom, we have a type error. 
we found a bug. Yes, TypeScript saves the day. That data thing shouldn't be in there. That was a bug. OK, and now we can do the same thing for the return type. By using the uh, re return type utility from TypeScript, you can extract the type, the return type of a function. OK, this is good, except there's a promise in there, and that's not our data. So we can get rid of the promise by using awaited, another built-in utility. And now the return type is exactly what we want. So that's a really handy pattern when using TypeScript. OK, we're making good progress. So now I've added the return type to the client. And let's go ahead and inspect that result. Oh, crap. Object is possibly under fine, not another one of those. Oh, there's this one little trick that we can do to get rid of this uh, type error. We can add an exclamation mark, and the type error goes away. No, oh, you can't do that. It just hides the bug. You should almost never use an exclamation mark, or as any, because it just covers up a potential bug. However, if you are new to TypeScript, or if you're on stage doing a demo like Tejas, feel free to use as any. But just be aware that it is not giving you type safety. This week, as I was preparing for this talk, literally, I got a message from a customer about a bug in production. So I stopped preparing my talk on type safety, and I go investigate the bug, and guess what? I found an as any that I wrote. <laughs> Oops. So I quickly fixed that and went on with my day. In the evening, I went to a party, and I was having the time of my life. And I got a message from another customer about another bug in production. Guess what? Another as any. Lesson learned. There are a few different ways to correctly fix the maybe undefined error. If that thing is expected to possibly be undefined, then use if else and just branch and correctly handle the logic. If it is unexpected, like maybe a ghost in your program, then use the assert function. What is assert? Assert is a function that will throw an error if the input condition is not true. The top here, using an if statement, is doing the same thing as the bottom assert call. So it's two different ways to do the same thing. And in TypeScript, you encounter this condition quite often. So assert is very handy and elegant. Assert is not built into JavaScript, unlike some other languages. So you have to write it yourself. And this is how you do it in TypeScript. The magic is using this assert keyword which is what tells TypeScript that, hey, this is doing this assert thing. Um, fix the type for me. Assert is one of the most important tools to have in your tool belt, and you should be using it often when using TypeScript, and probably when not using TypeScript. So back to the API handler. We have all the types to be defined, but to be production quality, we're missing something very important. We don't have authentication here, and we need that, but ignore that for now. What else is wrong? What if the, when it runs, what if the number of stars uh, input is 
actually a string or a date or an octopus, uh, it's not going to work, right? We need runtime validation. Both of these are super important. TypeScript does not do runtime validation, so you must do it yourself in your code. To be production quality, we would need all of these checks just for this one input. Now imagine if you had 10 input fields, or 50. You'd have to define all the types and all of the runtime validation for each one. That's crazy. Ain't nobody got time for that. Good news! There's a library called Zod that saves the day. Zod is a schema definition and runtime validation library. It allows you to define the type and the validation with the same line of code. So let's, it lets you go from what's on top to what's on bottom. For only one field, it's not a huge difference. But as you add more and more fields and more complex validation requirements, like it needs to be an email input or a website input or minimum password length or all that kind of stuff, Zod saves you a ton of work. Use Zod every time you are accepting user input or third-party data. So this means every API route, things like webhooks, interfacing with third-party systems, this will give you type safety and runtime safety. Here's a very cool tool that allows you to paste in a JSON payload, and it will generate the Zod schema for you. So this is really handy to quickly use Zod. There's one more trick that might blow your mind if you've never seen something like this before. Watch this. So, oops, missed one point. What's better than just validating input on the server? Client-side validation. Oh, crap. Does that mean I have to write all my validation requirements a second time just for the client? No, that'd be too hard. Watch this. I'm going to take the Zod schema and move it to a third file that I can import on both the client and the server. So now I update my inputs, or my imports here. Now I can import that schema on the client and pass it to my form component. And now I get type safety on the client for free from the code I already wrote. So this gives me type safety on the client and client-side validation. And on the server, it gives me type safety and runtime validation with the same code. This is the dream. It's so cool. All right. Let's talk about the different types of client-server data transfer options. We have get server side props, which is easy to infer data, uh, but it's only for data reading. We have REST, but you have to manually define all the types or use some type of complex code generation tool to use that. Oh, well, GraphQL. Actually, it requires the same amount of work as REST to get TypeScript. It seems we don't have any good solution for full stack type safety, but what choice do we have? What if there was a way to write a function uh, that runs on the server and then import that into your React component and just have it work? 
That would be amazing because you get type safety for, for free without generating code because it's just a function import. This happens to align very well with another style of API called RPC, which stands for Remote Procedure Call, is essentially running a function on another machine, sends some input, and gets some output. We could use React Query to manage caching and loading states and all of those things. This would be really, really cool. But for this to happen, you would have to do two things. The server function would have to be swapped out uh, and ex or exposed as an API endpoint somehow. Secondly, the, function, the server function import would have to be swapped with a fetch function that would call that API route. Guess what? This exists. It's called Blitz RPC, and it's been around for two years. It's used in production by thousands of applications all around the world, including many of you here in the audience, which is so cool. You may have, uh, so you may have heard about this, uh, but probably you weren't super jazzed about it because Blitz was a monolithic framework. But this year, Blitz 2.0 was a major pivot where we took all the components, broke them out, and now they're standalone components that you can use with any Next.js application. Let's look at this again. This is literally all the code you need for client-server data communication in Next.js. Like literally, like there's no other code. There's no REST, no GraphQL, no data fetching, no serialization or deserialization. This is literally all of it because that build time, we expose that as an API endpoint and we add the fetch function for you. This massively improves the speed at which you can build applications and it gives you amazing type safety. So now this is the full spectrum of options you have for client server data transfer with Blitz RPC giving you the best type safety for the least amount of work. Here's a summary of all the key points that I've talked about. Here's a list of really awesome resources that you'll need to scan the QR code, take out your camera, hold it up there, tap the link, and then you can download that. I'll download the slides. I'll also share it in Slack. And these links are really awesome. So you have the TypeScript docs, which are good, the TypeScript playground, which allows you to play with TypeScript in the browser. And so if you have some type of TypeScript bug or problem that you can't figure out, put the code in a playground, share it on Twitter or in your company Slack or whatever, and be like, hey, can someone help? And then people can code the solution, send you a new link, and you can see how it works. Uh, the React TypeScript cheat sheet is a really nice resource uh, for learning how to use types in React, um, especially if, you, if you've ever tried to use refs with TypeScript, you know it's a massive headache. This thing helps a little bit. Uh, TypeLevelTypeScript.com is a brand new thing. I think it was just announced last week. And it's really, really awesome for helping you understand TypeScript at, at a, at a uh, how, to, how to think in TypeScript. Like TypeScript is a language of itself. Inside of TypeScript, you have variables and loops and functions and all these things. And that'll help you understand that. And then the bottom two links are some really advanced articles uh, if you want to go deeper. As we come to the close of this session, I want to boost your confidence in TypeScript. You are smart. You can figure it out. With a moderate amount of work, you can be better at TypeScript than many of your peers. And now for a tiny plug, if you want AWS without pain, check out flightcontrol.dev. That's my company, and we make it easy to, to deploy applications to AWS. 
we give you a Heroku style uh, get push deploy experience, but on your own AWS account where you get complete full scalability and full security and ownership over it, unlike Heroku or Vercel or something like that. Thank you and good luck. Thank you, Brandon. I'm sure that no matter for how long you have been writing TypeScript code, there was something new for everyone. And what makes extremely happy is that something I created ended up being the part of this talk, transform.tools. Okay, so moving on to the next talk.